بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس ان دا پریویس سیشنز وی بین ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دی امپورٹنس آف گورنمنٹ ایز دی مین اسٹیک ہولڈر اینڈ وی بین ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا ڈفرنٹ فارمس اینڈ فارمیٹس اینڈ ٹائپس آف گورنمنٹ ریگولیشنز اینڈ ہاؤ دے ٹین ٹو انٹرفیس ود ایچ ادر اینڈ ہاؤ دے آر انڈیپینڈنٹ آف ایچ ادر آلسو ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو موو فارورڈ اینڈ ٹاک اباؤٹ دا کمپیریزن بٹوین کارپوریٹ اینڈ پبلک گورننس لیڈیز اینڈ جنرمن when we are talking about uh, corporate governance then it depends upon two factors uh, namely attitude and the values cherished by the management now when we are talking about attitude then we are talking about individual and collective attitude individuals have their own attitude and many a times the organization uh, through corporate governance and through public governance they tend to mold or transform the attitude and behavior of its employees uh, secondly what we see is is that values are very important so an organization can have a vision can have a mission and have its core values now the core values are basically the binding block of the organization and if the core values are not followed then everything tends to tumble away so we see that in corporate governance the attitude and the values are extremely important while in public governance we usually see that Uh, it is the running of the state as per law rules and regulations and those law rules and regulations are then imposed uh, upon the different stakeholders and the citizenship uh, of that particular country uh, now if we look at the management of an enterprise it can be ethical and it can try to maintain its internal corporate governance while if the environment in which it operates is not clean then it cannot be successful in operating ethically and fairly so Uh, what we are saying is that let's say for example uh, well according to transparency international we see that uh, in the corruption index the global corruption index pakistan unfortunately is uh, very much uh, at the back end uh, of corruption and we see that uh, there is rampant corruption uh, within the institutions uh, of pakistan now any organization that is trying to work ethically and uh, with a clean mandate uh, it will find it very difficult to work in this very gruesome environment so therefore what we see is that the environment has a very big impact on the organization because if the environment is unclean then uh, for the organization to be clean uh, is not impossible but becomes very difficult and it is not successful in operating ethically and fairly therefore the public governance has a very very important consequence on corporate governance and corporate governance cannot work in isolation to corporate governance uh, to public governance and therefore uh, both are interfaced and uh, interlinked uh, between uh, each other corporate governance ensures the behavior of management and public governance ensures the clarity of environment so what we see is that the behavioral context is ensured by corporate governance while the external environment basically is created or developed by the public governance public governance can nurture the, the appropriate uh, external environment in which an enterprise operates or it could create a lot of big problems so we see basically how businesses are growing and are nurtured in countries like singapore new zealand scandinavian countries and more honestly uh, prone and governed countries but in those countries where there is rampant corruption like for example pakistan uh, nigeria and other uh, african countries we see uh, that then the organizations also uh, cannot remain composed within the ambit of corporate governance so uh, these are uh, very distinguishing features uh, we also see uh, that uh, secp the securities exchange commission of pakistan regulated the stock exchange uh, in the country companies act 2017 is there and that basically governs the operations of business enterprises and public governance is the watchdog of corporate governance but if public governance is compromised then how can it oversee and overlook uh, the corporate world because then the corporate world would take advantage of uh that situation and therefore there would be many uh, miscongruences and miscongruences uh, between the different spheres and aspects of governance uh, and also corporate governance another factor which we see is uh, gaining a lot of impact uh, in the current uh, decade is globalization and it the increase in globalization and removal of trade barriers is adding more dimensions in corporate governance and therefore we see that there is corporate governance and there is public governance and then there is global governance so three dimensional uh, implications uh, on the governance system 
of any uh, corporate body. Pakistan has also adopted uh, the IFRS, which is internationally recognized for disclosure and bookkeeping, which is something very good and something very positive because it basically aligns and calibrates the companies uh, towards a more international contextualization and also uh, rules uh, based uh, regulations and would ensure that there can be more crosstalk and there can be better communication uh, between uh, national and international players uh, in the corporate sector. So that is very, very important. The internet and increasing use of information technology are opening new horizons for business. So what we see is, for example, freelancing is becoming huge and simultaneously the potential for cyber crimes which can be committed internationally is also being realized. So now what we are seeing is that it's not only local criminals technology prone, but international criminals technology prone and they are uh, now hitting uh, upon the different uh, organizations and creating a lot of problems and a lot of confusion and also a lot of challenges. In all of this, the role of judiciary is extremely important and uh, we basically see it ensures better public and corporate governance. There are many regulations, rules and procedures, but ultimately when uh, there is a, a dispute, then it is settled in the court. For example, if you look at labor laws, uh, then there are about 149 labor laws. Now, many uh, overlap, uh, there are many gray areas, then how is the issue settled? It goes to court and it is settled by the judiciary and therefore the judiciary is a very, very important component uh, of uh, the corporate governance system. And uh, what we see is that uh, the basic framework enumerated in the constitution of Pakistan, they basically are three main pillars. Uh, on one hand, we have the legislature, which tends to promulgate the laws uh, and the rules and regulations. Then we have the executive, uh, which tends to implement all of those laws, rules and regulations. And then the judiciary, which tends to interpret the different laws, rules and regulations. And that is how this whole system of corporate and public governance go hand in hand and independent of each other, very much interrelated and also uh, as we see the different formats basically emerging, the consequences are also similar and therefore there is a great need to have good corporate governance coupled with good public governance. Thank you so much.